Welcome to Liberty Park Music. I'm Michelle Huang, your piano instructor. Today, we begin the early intermediate piano curriculum. In this curriculum, we will explore a selection of repertoire from each of the four historic periods of Western music, the Baroque, Classical, Romantic, and the Contemporary periods. We will start with the Baroque period. The first piece we'll look at is Jean-Philippe Rameau's Rondino. Jean-Philippe Rameau was one of the most important French composers in the Baroque period. Rameau was most well known for his operas, but like many other Baroque composers at the time, Rameau kept a busy life composing different genres of works, including the motets, canons, songs, cantatas, and keyboard pieces. He was considered the leading composer for the harpsichord of his time. The term rondino means a small and shorter version of the musical form rondo. In a rondo, the theme will return multiple times throughout the piece. In a rondino, the theme might only be heard again once or twice at the most. Looking at Ramu's rondino, can you tell how many times the main theme returns? We can start by playing just the right hand to figure out the overall form of the piece. Here's the first four bar phrase. In the second phrase, also four bars long, we begin the same as phrase one. Changes slightly at the end of measures 7 and 8. The third phrase, measures 9 through 12, has the exact same rhythmic pattern and tune as phrase 1, but a fourth down. Phrase 4 also has the exact same rhythmic pattern and tune as phrase 2, but a fourth down as well. At the end of the fourth phrase, we see a term that we have learned before, DC al fine, or de capo al fine, which means from the head to the end. So we return to the beginning, play the first two phrases again, and end where the music is marked fine. In this rondino, the main theme, which are the first two phrases, returns twice. It measures 9 through 16, but a fourth down. And again, when the first two phrases are played, repeated. 
After a general overview of the composer and the musical form of Ramuz Rondino, let's talk about an important musical element in Baroque keyboard music, which is the articulations. In the last lesson of the beginner curriculum, we talked about the Baroque articulation, in which the eighth notes are played connected. quarter notes are played detached. These articulations go hand in hand with the musical style and instruments of the Baroque period. This piece, like many other pieces in the Baroque period, was written for the harpsichord, which is a much smaller instrument than the modern piano with lighter sound. So in general, the notes will be played lighter than what we're used to. Since the left hand notes are played as detached, let's practice moving from note to note. Detached notes are played as halfway between legato and staccato, with a slight space in between the notes, and a little nudge of the keys. In general, the bigger the interval, the longer the distance we have to travel from note to note. For example, the first to the second note is a large leap. It's an octave. We start with the natural hand position, five finger pattern. Play the first note. Simply pick up and leave, travel towards the direction of the second note. This octave leap is an over motion. Instead of stretching your hand to play the octave, simply bring your forearm and move your wrist from left to right to help making that leap easier. The idea is that we want to keep our hand in the natural hand position as much as possible without overstretching your hand. Then simply nudge each note, leaving a little space in between the notes. The nudging motion comes from the wrist. For the half notes, be sure to hold for almost two whole beats before detaching. Apply the same movements to rest the piece. Remember to keep your hand in the natural hand position and use your forearm and wrist as a guide to help you get from one note to the next. In measures 15 and 16, hold the D while detach the bottom D and G. The motion in the right hand is a combination of under and over movements. When the notes go down, the wrist and hand go over the notes. When the notes go up, wrist and hand go under the notes. Over and under. As you can see, your wrists and hands are constantly drawing circles. Practice the right hand slowly to engrave the motion in your muscle memory. Once you're comfortable playing hands separately with the notes, articulations, and the movements, practice putting hands together. This will be tricky at first because the two hands are playing two different articulations at the same time. The right hand notes are connected and the left hand notes are detached. 
A good way to get to know how the hands interact and play together is to play very slowly and pause briefly every time the left hand plays the next note. Notice how you lifted the left hand as the right hand keeps playing. At each pause, backtrack the directional relationship between your hands. As the right hand goes down here, the left hand comes up. The right hand goes up, down, as the left hand comes down as well. Right hand goes up, left hand comes down. the tunes for both hands by heart at this point. You're simply trying to see how the two fit together. Practice slowly in small chunks, first in two measures, then four measures, then phrase by phrase to play hands together. This piece has a dance-like quality. With a 3-4 time, think of an elegant French dance when you play this. As we talked about earlier, because this was written for the harpsichord, the notes are not to be played too heavily. Think up and regal, with a steady but moving tempo. In this lesson, we learn about the musical style of the Baroque period through the French composer Jean-Philippe Ramos Rondino. Continue to practice the articulations and movements in the piece. See you next time.